What's up everyone, this is Justin from Make Supply and in this video tutorial we'll be putting together a passport holder. This template set is a free PDF download. Um, if you're watching this on YouTube, you can find a link, on the web, uh, a link in the video description below to the website. If you're on the website already, look in the blog section and you will find the uh, post for this template set. You will be able to make it in two different versions. You can do it in round corners or square corners. We're going to do it in the round corners version, but the build process, process will be exactly the same. And this template is also available for purchase in an acrylic form. It's the same exact template, but uh, as a, you know, a nice, solid, durable acrylic template set. That is available in the web store, which will also be linked in the video description below. All right, so let's get started by taking inventory. Okay, let's go over inventory. So if you've never seen any of the videos I've done before, uh, I try to do all these projects with, um, you know, bare minimum basic hand tools. If you have the more advanced versions of any of these tools, feel free to use them. And if I forget to list anything that I end up using later in the project, I will uh, add that in and this will also all be listed on the uh, blog post for this template you know where you can also buy these tools and items okay so first I'm going to move the templates off to the side because we're going to discuss them next so let's put these over here for now I uh, will be using let's start uh, CS Osborne scratch all uh, generic wing divider Uh, skiving knife, number two exacto knife. For stitching, I will be using um, Crimson 3.85 diamond stitching chisels. The uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, I guess nine prong and two prong. Um, the thread I'll be using is Amy Roke uh, 532 uh, wax linen white. And the needles I'll be using are John James uh, 002 size. Uh, black, uh, generic block of wax for waxing the thread and waxing edges. I'm using some gum trag for burnishing. I usually never do that, so I bought some and I'll use it on this project. Um, cup of water for burnishing. Um, I'm going to be using a Coco Bolo Dremel bit for burnishing, but if you have just a wood slicker, that works fine. A generic piece of sandpaper for sanding edges, some leather craft cement for gluing the pieces together, uh, edge beveler for beveling edges, and a generic uh, mallet for punching our chisels or using our chisels. And I will be using a marble uh, slab to punch onto, which I will bring forward into the picture when it's time to do that step. Okay, so next I will bring out the leather that we'll be using. Okay, so the leather I'm gonna use for this project is natural veg tan from leatherplan.com. It is a uh, three to four ounce leather. Um, undyed, you know, unfinished, all that good stuff. I was thinking about dyeing this project, but I'll, I'll leave it for another one. But uh, yep, so this is uh, from a side from leatherplan.com. I'll list it in the, uh, a link to it in the um, inventory section of the blog post. All right, so let me put this off to the side for now. And next we will look at the template. Okay, so as I mentioned in the intro, this is a free PDF download. Um, go to the website, which will be linked in the, if you're watching this on YouTube, it's linked in the, product, uh, the video description. And then if you're on the website, it'll just be in the, the, the lineup. Um, you can print it out. It'll come in square edges or round edges. The process will be pretty much the same putting it together. It's just a, an aesthetic difference. We're gonna do the um, round edge one for the video. Okay, so 
your printout will come out on three pages. Um, it'll look something like this, but it'll have more writing on it by the time I finish them. And this is all three parts of your template. This template's also available in an acrylic version. Uh, you can find that on the store, in the store. It comes uh, same pieces, as you can see. And then, you know, the acrylic one is just a lot easier to deal with. And I will set up the paper templates, but be using the acrylic for the actual project. All right, so let me put this off to the side. Okay, so as I mentioned, it comes out in three pages. This is your outside cover. This one is the inside cover. Uh, this is the same width, the same overall size as this, but we have to cut out this middle section here. And then the card slots for the interior. Okay, so your first step, when you print these out, please make sure to print them at 100% scale and make sure that auto scaling is turned off. It's a big problem with printing out PDF templates sometimes. So if you don't, your project's gonna be the wrong sizes and you'll get sad. Okay, so the first step will be to cut out the pieces. So cut out the outside, uh, the full outside of this panel. This one, you're gonna cut out the outside and this inside part here, and then all your card slots. So these two are pretty self-explanatory, <clears throat> sorry. This one, uh, I think it's easier to cut out the outside first and then the inside. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that now. You can freehand it or you, know, you can use a ruler if, if that helps. Okay, and I forgot to mention I printed this out on um, 150 pound cardstock. I hope that makes sense. I'm completely just guessing. But it's a, whatever the heaviest cardstock you can get to, to fit into your printer and print out works best for these. Gives it a little bit more durability than a regular piece of paper. But if you've seen any of my videos before, you already know the deal with that. Okay, so now that you have the outside cut, um, now I think is the easiest time to cut the inside. So. Obviously these sections here are gonna be a little delicate, so just don't push too hard or pull too hard. It'll, it'll, you can break this pretty easy. Okay, just like that. And you can throw away that, those two pieces. So that's the inside panel. I'm gonna go ahead and cut these, the rest of these out uh, off camera and we'll come back and get started. Okay, so I went ahead and cut everything out. You can see you have all your pieces now. So how this lines up will be this um, larger divider <clears throat> will line up on the left-hand side here, just like that. And then your card slots will line up on the right. And that'll be the inside portion of the passport. And then once we're done that, we put it, we connect it to the outside portion and stitch all the way around. Okay, so the first step will be to trace these pieces onto your leather. So like I mentioned before, I'm going to use the acrylic for my project just to make it go faster, but you know, take your paper templates and do the same thing I'm doing. 
All right, so I'm going to put them off to the side. All right. You know, make a nice mess like I'm doing. Okay. So you're gonna go ahead and cut out trace onto your leather following the template. Where is my scratch hole? There it is. Okay, so we're gonna trace one of each onto your leather. Um, with the card slots, make sure that they are opposite direction. So that goes on there. So make sure that this is facing the out part of the corner here. And then the same with this. Otherwise, you're going to have to flip it. So trace them on the right side. So with this one, the corner, the round corner is on the left. On this one, the round corner is on the right. trying to find a good place to start. It's a little messed up in this corner here. Not good enough for a, a panel. So I'll start here. Okay, so when tracing the inside panel, um, there will be a marking here on your PDF and on your acrylic. I forgot to put it on this before the video. Um, where you will mark through the leather, not cut, just mark with your scratch off where the bottom of the T slot will align. All right, so before you um, finish, you know, remove your template for this part remember to mark on the leather so you know where your T-slot goes. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and finish tracing these real quick off camera, come back. Um, I'm going to trace it, I'm going to cut these out, and then we'll come back and continue on. Okay, so I went ahead and cut out um, the outside shell, the two slots for the right hand side and the slot for the left hand side. I wanted to do this one on the camera just to make sure um, it's done in a decent manner <laughs> if you don't know how to do it. Um, so the same way we did the template, you're going to want to cut out I think the outside first and then cut the inside. I think it's a lot easier to do. Because uh, once you cut out this inside section here, this part gets really shaky and it's a lot harder to cut this long line. So you know what, I am going to just 
cut out this section real quick. way easier to manage than moving this big piece of hide around. Okay, so now I'm gonna cut. Okay, so I did the outside there, now the inside. So just be careful when doing these, this top parts here, because this is going to want to bend. Uh, these are pretty fine on the other side here. All right, done that. So the next step will be to take all of our pieces and uh, prep and burnish edges that won't be available to us once we start putting it together. Okay, so now it's time to edge and burnish and prep edges that won't be available once we put the template, uh, the passport wallet together. So, you can take your main panel and put it off to the side because that one is good to go. So for the rest of the pieces though, we are going to need to burnish, if you decide to burnish, you don't have to, uh, the top edge here and the side, uh, the left hand side. The top edge, left hand side. And then the only the inside edge of this piece and then the inside, the whole inside of this piece. All right. So there's a couple different ways you can go about this. Um, uh, if you have an edger that is small enough to do a single layer of, you know, three to four ounce leather, you can do that. I have one of those, so um, you can just take the edge off there. and then on the left hand side. I'm not going crazy with it, just a little bit.
Okay, that's good enough for me. Um, now we're going to want to burnish all these edges. So I am going to use my Dremel. So. Charging the battery. But if you have, you know, one of these, this is fine. I'm going to put a little bit of water. Okay, so I'm going to go through each part with just the water, then we'll come back and do each part with the gum track, just to keep everything even. Okay, and obviously you can go much more in depth with your burnishing than I'm doing here. Some people do, you know, several passes, layering the water and the gum track and their oil and waxes and they get really nice edges. Those are done. Okay, that's good enough for the water. And then do the same thing again with your gum track. Um, I am going to just use my finger.
Okay. And you could go back again and do everything with wax, uh, beeswax, or the leather craft wax that we sell um, for a final seal. Uh, I'm going to do that at the end, but I'm not going to do that now, just for the sake of time. Okay. So now we have burnished all the parts that need to be burnished prior to building and we can start putting it together. Um, the first side we will mess with will be this side. All right. So you can put this piece off to the side. Okay, so now we are going to stack our card slots and stitch them down, okay? So being that I did not mark where the bottom of my T-slot is here, I'm going to do it manually. So you should have a mark right around here where the bottom of your T-slot lives. So if you forget it, here's a way you can get around that. So just line up your bottom slot perfectly in place on where it's supposed to be. And then you know, lightly put your T-slot in there so it lines up and sits on top. Just like that. Once they're together, you can kind of move them around a little bit. Get them in place and then just remove the bottom card slot and then mark with your scratch all. You know, you can put these marks there because this will never be seen, you know, at the end. Okay? So now I know where my T-slot lives. Um, if you want, if your leather is thicker, you can skive down the edges here. I might do that real quick. Um, you can take your skiving knife and then just pare down some of the bulk here. It's more important when there's multiple T-slots stacked. Uh, when there's one, it's not too big of a deal, but if you want a nice polished look, I would suggest skiving down some of this. So I'm going to do that real quick, come back, and then we'll put it on. Okay, so I went ahead and skived off some of the bulk here. Um, I didn't want to cover it here. There's plenty of good videos on YouTube on how to skive who are better teachers at it than I would be. Um, but I also got <laughs> my T-slat a little dirty because when you put natural veg tan down on anything, it just picks up dirt, so that sucks. But we will continue. Okay, so now I will find where I marked my T-slot bottom. Just make sure to double check my alignment. Because once you glue it down and stitch it, it's there for good. All right. Okay, that looks good. So now I'm going to take my glue And I'm going to put just a little bit down. Remember with glue or rubber cement, you're just using it to make contact. It's not supposed to hold anything. So you just want enough just to keep it down while you're stitching. Okay, so what I like to do is do the bottom first and then come back up and do these parts. Okay, so now that that's in place, we're gonna stitch this down. 
So you're going to take your wing divider or your stitch groover and mark a little line across the bottom. And then take your irons. I'm just going to use, you don't really have to stitch across the whole bottom. The credit card isn't going to move, you know, further past. I'm just going to do something like four, four holes there. Mark them down. And then you're going to punch through there. So I will bring the stitching apparatus over once it's time to do the outside. But for now, I'm just going to go ahead and punch these through. And then we will get this stitched down. Okay, so I went ahead and just stitched that down there. Nothing fancy, just a couple of stitches just to attach it. So I'm going to go ahead and cut my thread. You want to tamp down your stitches. Okay. So now we will be putting on the other side, the other card slot. With this one, obviously, you just want to glue around the three sides. Don't glue the top. Okay, so just put the bottom card slot on there. I am going to let this dry for a second, and then we are going to put some glue under this flap and under this flap to permanently glue that T-slot down. Okay, so now that we have uh, card slots glued down, I'm going to let that dry and then we are going to come back and put down our first line of stitches. Okay, so I let that dry for a minute. Now I'm going to take my wing divider and I'm going to mark a stitching line on the outside here. You don't have to worry about this side. I'm going to go down pretty much all the way. Uh, you don't have to stitch all the way down to the very bottom if you don't want to. So I'm going to go just to like here. Okay. And then from there, I'm going to take my stitching chisels and I'm going to overhang the last tooth on the edge here. And then just mark down with hand pressure just to make sure everything looks good.
Okay. I don't know how well this gets shown on the camera, but I have a line of stitching here. So now it's time to punch through. So I will bring over my slab. It's just a marble slab from Tandy and a piece of scrap leather on the top. I hope this is still in focus. I hate this camera. And then I'm going to go ahead and just punch through all the way down. Okay, so let me move this back out of the way. And now we have our stitching line. So I am going to go ahead and saddle stitch this starting from up here. I'm going to start two holes down. I'm going to back stitch one, back stitch to the last hole, and stitch all the way down and do the same thing here. Um, I have a video on saddle stitching if you need help with saddle stitching. I'm not going to stitch on camera, it just takes too long. And then there's also um, tons of other YouTube videos on how to saddle stitch, which are also really good. So I'm going to go ahead and do that now. We're going to come back and then we will continue. Okay, so I went ahead and finished stitching that line there. So now I'm going to throw my knife at myself. Okay. Uh, I'm going to trim the thread here. If you have a lighter and you want to burn that down, you can do that. And then I'm just going to tamp down the stitches. Okay. And that's our first line of stitching there. Um, the next part will be to put the side panel on. There's no stitching in this part, so all you're going to be doing is putting a line of glue down around there. Okay, just a light layer of glue and place it in place. Okay, as you can see, our uh, passport case is taking shape here. So while this dries, this glue dries, I'm just gonna grab our back panel here. Um, if your edges are a little rough, maybe you wanna sand them. This part's kind of a make or break um, when these are the same size, so you got to make sure that they line up like perfectly edge to edge, otherwise the stitching doesn't come out so great.
Okay. So I'm going to do a trial run here. Maybe I'll put down, I'm just putting this down to keep the uh, leather from picking up any dirt from the pad here. So put your uh, outside panel face down and then plop the guts on there. All right, looks good. So as you can guess, the next step will be to glue a light layer around the whole outside. Just remember there's a very thin section here so don't put too much glue, it'll overflow. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and do that now. This might actually confuse me, so I'm going to take it off. All right, and now you want to gently put it down in place and then, you know, kind of maneuver it around so you have it nice and straight. Okay, when you're uh, feeling good about the placement, go ahead and put some force on there. If you have uh, binder clips, you want to clip it up. You can also do that. Okay, so what I'm going to do is let this dry for a minute and then we'll come back and sand it just to make sure our edges are nice or square and then we'll lay down some stitching lines. Okay, so I let that dry for a minute there. Now I'm going to take some sandpaper and then just clean up the edges. You need this to be nice and square.
Okay, that looks good enough. Move all your dust. All right, now we're ready to put our stitching line down and finish this thing up. Um, I am going to put a stitching groove on both sides. Um, I'm going to punch from the outside in. I know a lot of people like to punch from the inside out because then you know you'll have the nice version of the stitching, the nicest version of the stitching on the inside to match this line. Um, I still think it looks better when the outside is the um, the outside is the top of the stitch. So I'm going to put a line, a lighter line on the inside, just for um, purpose for when I'm punching through that I can have a gauge of where it is if I'm off track or if I'm on track. Okay, so that's the inside. I'll do the outside now. Got a little bit of overhang here. I didn't line it up too well. That's okay, I just have to pay attention when I get to that section. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna go grab my uh, slab, put it back here, and then we'll go ahead and mark our holes. All right, time to mark our holes. I am going to just pick a place, so I will pick the bottom right-hand corner of the passport case once it's closed. So if it's open like this, when it's closed, it'll be like this. This would be the bottom right hand side. So I'm just gonna start here. You can pick anywhere though, it doesn't really matter. I'm gonna go around just with hand pressure first, just to make sure everything lines up good.
So it was close to matching up complete. So at that section there, I know that's where my holes start and stop. Slightly smaller hole there, but that's fine. Okay. So now I'm going to go ahead and punch everything through. Uh, I like to, I stop a lot to make sure that I'm lined up good on the other side because, you know, you want to keep your stitching lines as nice and straight as possible. especially when you're transitioning from there's two layers and there's three layers and there's two layers uh, make sure because you'll feel the need, you'll feel the, the prongs um, kind of bend maybe a little bit because of the leather so I like to make sure that I'm paying attention to when it's going to switch from two to three layers As you can see, I check a lot. 
just to make sure that I'm keeping a nice even margin around. And if you're not, just slowly start to pull it back to the right direction. Okay, so what I'm doing here is um, there's a section between these two holes that's not even, so I'm going to split the difference, punch a hole with my awl, and then use that as this ending point. Just like that. All right, cool. So now 
I went ahead and I punched all the holes all the way around. Did a pretty good job. Pretty even. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and stitch this now. Uh, this is going to be a long stitch, so I'm going to do this off camera as I always do stitching and try to get it done before it gets dark and come back and we can finish the edges. So let me do that now. <clears throat> okay, just went ahead and finished stitching all the way around. So I'm going to cut this off now. Alright, now I'm going to do a little uh, tamp down on the stitch. Okay. Alright, so now at this point we've stitched everything up and we're looking good. Last step will be to do the edges. So I'm going to do one more round of sandpaper. And take your edger, go around both sides. Okay. Now I'll go to burnish and then we're done.
All right, so for the thicker sections, I'm going to use this just because that's not being, it's not big enough to basically encompass the whole edge. Honestly, this thing's way better than that anyway. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna do another round with some gum track.
All right, last one, wax. Okay, so I just finished doing the edges and we're all done. Let me um, clean up a little bit here and then we will uh, check out the finished product. Okay, let's check out our finished product here. And as you see, it has a section on uh, an equal, it's the equal, it's an equal distance on both sides, but, but I think it looks nicer when you put the passport, you know, you can fit the whole thing in there all the way to the end. You can, you know, just put a couple pages, you know, in there to, to overhang like that. Some cards. And the card slots will, um, stretch out a little bit more and you can get some uh, some more cards in there as you use it over here you know equal amount of space for you know when carry some receipts boarding passes printouts anything like that and you know if you want to uh, put a strap on this you know that'd be a great uh, modification on on your end that you know put a nice strap on here and keep it closed otherwise it'll work just nice like that all right, um, thanks for tuning in and checking out the video and downloading the template or purchasing the template if you decide to get an acrylic version. As with all the products, um, please don't give out my pattern or sell my pattern, but you can absolutely sell the products that you make from the patterns to whoever you want or just give them away or give them to your family, anything like that. So. Um, if you have any questions, shoot me an email and I will uh, try to help you out as best as I can. Thanks.